The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Rude, Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. Today my forecast is coming from the Brewster Flats where I'm hoping to do some sight fishing for striped bass. Looking ahead to the weekend, we have very little chance of rain, there'll be light winds, and no marine advisories are in the forecast. This will be a great chance for you to get out there before the summer is over and take advantage of this weather pattern. Remember, always check the latest marine forecast before you head out on the water. Here are some upcoming events. August 25th, the Babylon Tuna Club is sponsoring the Snapper Derby at the Babylon Docks. August 26th, Hooks for Heroes Summer Fluke Slam. September 1st, Patchog Snapper Derby. September 12th, the Fisherman Surf Inshore Show at the Huntington Hilton. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Now on to the fishing forecast. On the east end, Mike at Star Island Yacht Club and Marina said the fluking remains excellent for boats running to the Cartwright, the wind turbines off of Block Island, out of Frisbees, Rocky Hill, and the north grounds with many fluke hitting the 10 pound mark or better being weighed in. Scott Leonard of Top Gun Charters tells me he, he's been throwing back fish six to eight pounds all week working the north grounds. Bass fishing has been a little bit sporadic, but there have been some good scores made on the top of the tide on live bait at Great Eastern and the Elbow, with better action being reported from Block Island and the Southwest Ledge. A 71 pounder was caught and released off of Block Island last week by a Rhode Island angler. Everybody has high hopes for this weekend's August moon. Porgies remain thick off the lighthouse, and in Shinnecock, Captain John on the Shinnecock Star has been finding some quality fluke, along with a nice mix of sea bass, triggerfish, and porgies in the ocean when the sea conditions are right. Prime tides in the bay are still producing some good skinny water action with fluke to seven plus pounds this week. Now let's check in with Nikki Fishing Girl to find out what's happening around the Fire Island area. Thanks Tim, reporting from the Dixie 2 out of Captree State Park. Fishing in the Gray South Bay on the flood tide again, we've been seeing lots of short fluke with keeper fluke mixed in between. Most of our bigger keepers are coming again from the ocean, drifting between the inlet and the Fire Island Reef out in the ocean. A lot of our big doormats are coming on big baits. So if you catch a sea robin, don't throw them back. Strip them up into nice long strips with a thin layer of meat and you may be able to catch yourself a nice big doormat. Now let's check in to the west with Captain Joey Leggio. Well, thank you, Tim. The word over here in Reynolds Channel, Deb's Inland area, is the fluke is remaining strong. Lots of fish being caught. Again, AB Reef is number, my number one spot. Uh, Hempstead Reef is producing. Hearing some guys down in cholera getting uh, hit and miss over there. The uh, the snappers actually, if you want to have some fun with the kids, take a cruise out in the boat from the Atlantic Beach Bridge down to the tip of Silver Point Jetty, all up on those beaches on the east side. Plenty of plenty of snappers there. You'll see them spraying the little spearing and stuff. Pretty cool actually for the kids throwing those little snapper zappers. I don't have any around here to show you. Little cast masters. Kids can have a blast when taking Frankie for that stuff. It's a lot of fun. Also, on the uh, the porgies, man, I tell you, every piece I go over, it's loaded with porgies. The whole, all the reefs have them. There's porgies, there's triggerfish, still sea bass. You know, give that a shot. It's so much fun. Take the kids with that, too. You know, just throw the clams down, double hook rigs, high lows. You know, one here, one here, little hooks, two O's. Put some clam on there, drop it down, and boom, instant action. Tons and tons of fish. Really epic porgy, yeah, that's for sure. I uh, didn't get much reports for the offshore scene this year, this week, so I really don't have much to say about that. Just uh, fluke fishing, definitely I would say is probably your best, uh, best bet. We had a uh, club versus club tournament this week, and uh, I think I took third with a 5.5 pounder. Again, tight to the wall, Atlantic Beach Reef. So there's a lot of action. A lot of four pounders are coming up. My buddy had a pair of sixes, same location, tight to that wall. So that's my report for Debs, and uh, hopefully I have some better news for you this week, and we'll see how it goes. This weekend, I believe, is the uh, Hooks for Heroes tournament. I'll be fishing that. It's a great cause. So guys, get out there, fish that. And uh, I believe you have Saturday to join now because they closed down all the uh, bait stations that were accepting the uh, the entry fees. So go down to the captain's meeting and join. It's for a great cause. And I'll uh, see you all out there. Take care, Tim. Talk to you this week. Let's check in with Luke Feeney from Jamaica Bay. 
Hey folks, Luke Feeney here reporting from the West End in Jamaica Bay and Rockway Inlet areas. I just came back from fishing today and man oh man, there was bait everywhere. Peanut bunkers, snappers, you name it. Both are great baits for late season doormat fluke. The best place to catch these doormats is in Ambrose Channel this time of year. Go deep, use the big bait, and don't forget to pack the heavy lead because man can the tide rip in Ambrose. The best time to fish it is one hour on either side of the slack tide to hold easier. But pack the 10s and 12s just in case the tide is running heavily. You have to stay deep for a chance at a nice double digit fish and the reports are that the keeper ratio has gone way up with fish well over 10 pounds. This will stay good until the season closes in September. And while you're out there keep an eye out for tight patches of birds because there might just be albies under those birds. The reports are that are, there are a few running around chasing small bait. So keep the light tins handy, scale down the tackle with a spinning rod. Use 12 to 15 pound leader and have a blast. They've been catching sandbar sharks in areas surrounding the Silver Gull, and my friend Matt Bartolomeo caught one yesterday that was four feet long and safely released. He was using half a bunker, so break out the surf gear and give it a try, daytime or nighttime, it doesn't matter. Some 60 pound plus drum have been caught recently at Rockway Reef while targeting porgies, so if you hook into something big while fishing there, hold your rod tight because it might not be the bottom, it might be a massive drum. The crabbing has been really solid. I got two dozen last night poking around the local pilings. So grab a crab net and a powerful spotlight and maybe a buddy and head out there and give it a try. In addition to being a great bait, they taste absolutely amazing. That's it for this week. On the North Shore, Peter Ternowski has filed this report. Thanks, Tim. With all this bad weather making it difficult and sometimes even dangerous to get out on the water, I'm starting to get the blues, the cocktail blues. These voracious predators have been all over Huntington Bay, Northport Bay, and all of the local harbors. I've been using these pretty often because they're, they're durable and um, they, they kind of mimic some of the bait fish that they're going after. And if you don't mind throwing away a couple of bucks, they've been loving these small, soft plastic swim sheds. The only problem with these are they're going to bite off most of these tails. So you're going to go through packs of these and be prepared. But they were very effective out there. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you're going after the blues, use good leader. So use either a good fluorocarbon leader or even better, a wire leader if you're only going after the bluefish and, and nothing else. It's been pretty easy to find them too. Just look for some small blitzes along the shore and uh, just cast into that. Very simple. This is a great way to bring kids up a little bit from the snappers. They'll give a, get a little bit more of a fight and uh, they'll have a good time. Back to you, Tim. A new correspondent also from the North Shore is Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle in Northport. Mark, what's the latest? Great news for anglers in the Eaton's Neck, Huntington Bay area. We've got bluefish. On the outside, they've been ranging from 12 to 15 pounds. They're chasing bunker schools, so using bait's a great way to go. If you're looking for that ultralight fly fishing tackle experience, there's plenty of three and four pound bluefish that have started to run the bays. They're on the peanut bunkers. Look for the peanut bunkers moving along the water's edge and cast in. Snappers, they're everywhere. They're still on the shores, the beaches, and the docks. So you can take the kids out before the summer's over and get some quality family time in. If you're looking for fluke, they're still in the bay. Work the shoals. Try to use some of those snappers as bait to catch a trophy fish of a lifetime. But you remember your regulations and don't overkeep any of the snappers. Keep them alive if you're going to use them for bait. If you'd like sea bass, sea bass have been doing pretty well. you got to stick it out. We've had fish up to 20 inches, clam and squid. And the porgies, forget it, they're everywhere. So if you want to go and just have some fun bottom fishing, the porgies are there. Use worms and clams, and you'll have a great time. Now we go further east and check in with Hawaiian Dan. Thanks, Tim. Aloha from Hawaiian Dan of TalkFishTV.com, reporting for the Fisherman Magazine. As always, out here in the field where we do our very best to provide you with the latest intel to help put you on the fish. This week's shout out goes to the boys at the home front, Hawaiian Fire. Thank you so much, brothers, for your contribution to humanity. I love you guys. So much aloha. Now for the fishing report. East Beach, Monsanto Inlet, and Monsanto Harbor continue to be flooded with non-stop snapper blitzing action. Simply grab you something small and shiny with a treble hook and you're guaranteed to bend a rod on every single cast. Today I'm working the inshore backwaters with my Sea Eagle inflatable 285 frameless pontoon boat. And there's definitely no shortage of a mixed bag of porgies, snappers, fluke, and even the cocktail blues have begun moving in. Simply bouncing a metal fish jig off the bottom is certain to produce. Now, 
This week I noticed quite a bit of trash has blown up on the beaches because of the recent storms. But I have a great faith in humanity and most definitely us Long Islanders. I know that you'll help me do our very best to pick up as much trash as fathomly possible at each and every outing. Now do me a favor, get off those couches, get out there and fish, and until next week, this is Hawaiian Dan and this airplane flying by, reporting for the Fisherman Magazine. Now back to you, Tim. Aloha! Senior Fisherman Editor Fred Galafaro has the latest from the suds. Hey, thanks, Tim. And yes, uh, in the surf anyway, uh, quality bass have been a pretty scarce commodity uh, for most of the season, for that matter. But there are, good news is, there are lots of small bass around, a lot of fish from 16 to 24 inches, some mixed in pushing the keeper mark. Um, those fish are spread all along the East End, uh, the East End Ocean Beaches, Southampton, East Hampton primarily. But they're also on the, on the back sides of Mariches and Shinnecock Inlets. Uh, a lot of fun if you drop down to light tackle, you can have a ball with those fish. And I'm starting to think that it's going to be very similar to last fall where um, a lot of the action this fall is going to be made, of, made up of those smaller fish, school fish, which again, if you drop down to light tackle, it's still a lot of fun. Uh, down on the west end, uh, both Albies and Bonita have showed up. Uh, they, there were some uh, reports of Albies and Bonita at Breezy Point. Uh, they also have small bass down at that end of the island along the ocean beaches. Your best bet there is early in the morning. Uh, the only quality bass I've heard of within the past couple of weeks actually has been a 35 pounder that was caught in a bunker chunk at Democrat Point. Um, except for the usual cocktails, the only decent blue fishing has still been in Montauk. Uh, I talked to Paul at Paulie's Bait and Tackle. He said there's been blues to 10 plus pounds up along the north side, uh, also in Turtle Cove on a couple of occasions under the light. Uh, they're taking top water plugs and he said that not there every tide, but it's been fairly consistent. Definitely worth a shot if you're looking to catch some decent blues. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the island, it's pretty much sharks, triggerfish, uh, porgies, and fluke. Uh, a lot of guys have uh, drop down catching those fish either for the table or just for the sake of bending a rod but they are providing action if you can't find any bass or blues. Uh, hey, we've got uh, good news from Craig at Smith Point. The outer beach at Smith Point is now open all the way to the inlet so that's a big improvement uh, from what it's been with the plovers the past uh, basically two months. So if you want to fish that stretch down near Great Gun, that's some great structure down there, you can now drive all the way down there. You don't have to take Burma Road. Uh, hey, the uh, surf, uh, surf slash inshore show takes place at the Huntington Hilton. That's September 12th. It's a Wednesday night. Uh, doors open at 6. Seminars get going at 6.30. We've got Alberto Nye. Uh, we've got uh, Bill Wetzel and Matt Broderick uh, doing some great seminars. So stop on down. And the first 600, the, uh, first 600 people that attend get a nice goodie bag uh, with some great tackle worth far more than the price of admission. So hope to see you there. Until next week, Fred Golafaro here for thefisherman.com. On the offshore report, tough weather conditions throughout the weekend and east winds in the early part of the week made it rough for some offshore conditions. Boats that did sail had a generally tough time finding tuna, but some did manage a few yellowfin at Chicken Canyon. Action with the big eyes and bluefins have slowed after a good start, but there has been a decent number of whites and some blue marlin reported. Participants in last week's Hamptons Offshore Classic had a generally tough go of it, but enough fish were caught to settle most categories, with the exception of the dayboat category, where no big eye, yellowfin, or true albacore were landed. Remember, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest. Get out there, catch them up. This is Tim C. Smith for the Fisherman. Com. Hey anglers, the Fisherman Surf and Inshore Fishing Show is Wednesday, September 12th at the Huntington Hilton. See seminars by the region's best surf and inshore experts. First 500 through the doors receive a goodie bag worth more than the price of admission. Check out the free workshops and see more than 75 vendors with the latest fishing gear. Don't miss this opportunity to get ready for the fall run. Visit thefisherman.com for more information.